live video series today is friday it's a fun friday and we are actually taking your requests and that's how we got with these two vehicles today so this is the 2022 kia carnival lx plus and we are going to compare it to the kia sorento x line because there's a number of people out there that continue to say yeah i want an suv maybe i need a minivan so we're going to go through and help you decide which one's best for you and the best part is i'm not the guy who has the minivan issues i like them a lot so we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about the differences between these two vehicles what might make one better for you than the other and uh some just different features so we go really really in depth here we're going to spend about a half an hour going through these vehicles and showing you all the little details and we're doing it live which means there's a live audience that's commenting along with us and they will uh ask me questions and they will do that and uh, if you are not watching live with us and you just want to watch the content, you can skip ahead to the three minute mark. But if you want to know how to watch live, I'll show you how to do that right now. So every weekday at two o'clock, we come here in our little video bay here and we look at a Kia or Hyundai vehicle and uh, oftentimes a couple of them. And you just have to go to our YouTube page at two o'clock, which is what we're doing exactly right now and you will see our live video right there on our home page so we're going to click into that we're going to not watch the ad for a quick second because we have three dealers that support us here and i encourage you to support them they are brantford kia brantford hyundai and owen sound hyundai the ontario area and are looking at a kia or hyundai vehicle connect with me right on i'm gonna I will connect you with my sales team that I work with and uh, they will treat you the way I would treat you, which is the way family should treat each other. That's what I think. All right, so uh, what's going on for news and notes? We've got a lot going on actually. Uh, yesterday we talked about the Ionic 5. That's an electric vehicle that's coming out for Hyundai. Uh, that's starting production uh, beginning of August on that one. So we'll see it soon after that. Uh, we're gonna probably find out a lot more about the Kia EV6, which is Kia's, uh, version of that car it's on the same platform but it's an entirely different car really uh so that's going to start coming out uh, a lot more in september uh big news i can break to you is if you're a sorrento fan there is a plug-in it's uh, gonna hit and uh, i don't have any information on it yet but it'll be out a plug-in hybrid first All right so this vehicle right now has four cylinder four cylinder turbo in hybrid and hybrid variant so that's pretty exciting news we've got that confirmed um and we'll have more details as we talk about that and uh what else is going on i think that's it for news for that so oh we are buffering okay all right so what we're gonna do is are we having any trouble those of you who are just joining us that you are not live the live audience was having a little buffering issue so we're just going to find out if we fix that issue by having someone tell me that we are back uh, so just give me a second to let those comments join in. There we go. We are better. All right. We kicked it off of the Wi-Fi in the store. We put it on my own, uh, data plan. So here we go. We're going to use my data plan. Hopefully this is more secure or it works better. All right. Do me a favor guys real quick, hit that like button for me and we'll keep going here. All right. So before we get going, why are we looking at these two cars? A lot of people come in and they say, you know, I really want a Sorento, but I need the space of a minivan. Uh, it used to be in the past, people would never come in and say, oh, I want the minivan, but I guess I have to settle for this. So there is still that debate. And of course, Kia is no longer advertising their new minivan, the Carnival, as a minivan. They are uh, calling it the LUV in Canada, the love. It is the life utility vehicle. I, however, am a realist and, um, I'm gonna call it a minivan, cause it's a minivan. It's a really good minivan. And if you have trouble telling your friends that you're driving a minivan, calling it the love is not gonna help you socially. So we're gonna call it a minivan because it is, and it's a fantastic minivan. And uh, we're also gonna go through this. So let me know guys, which one you want me to start with because we will compare both. We got a lot to compare, V6 engine versus four cylinder turbo or four cylinder regular engine. You've got more seating, you've got uh, all wheel drive, you've got roof rails on both, you've got a little bit extra ground clearance, um, but you know, stuff like that. So we'll see which one you guys wanna do first. I'm letting our live audience decide here and that's where we will go in first. Four cylinder, please. <laughs> all right, so it sounds like we're going with Sorento first. All right, so here's the thing. I wanna show you why I chose these two particular models and it's real simple. 
The um, Carnival is the only one we have still in stock that's not sold. Uh, these things are selling like crazy, and it's a fairly new model for us, so we haven't really been able to keep up with stock yet. The Sorrento, different story. Uh, been out for a little while, we got a little bit of variety in these ones. Uh, I did choose this one, however, because it tows the same amount. So this is a four-cylinder turbo that tows 3,500 pounds. It is slightly more than the Carnival. You could also go slightly less, and I'll talk about those differences um, than this trim. Anyways, I'll talk about those differences as we move through. So let me just show you what I've got in front of us here. And in the uh, Sorrento lineup, the LX Premium and the X line, we are based in Canada. These are the two that would surround that price. So 36,495 or 39,495. So we have this one here, the 39,495, the X line model. They are very similar inside and I will point out some of the differences. We can see the 191 horsepower tows 2,800 pounds or 281 horsepower tows 3,500 pounds. So that's something to keep in mind there. I did choose the higher priced one today. Uh, we could do another comparison later, choosing the lower priced one. The Carnival is the LX Plus model. Same engine in every Carnival. Um, and the one I have is for, uh, 38,295. So again, between the two prices of those two um, Sorrentos I showed you. So in today's video, the Carnival is just a little bit less expensive than the Sorrento, but we can vary that up a little bit to suit you. All right, people voted Sorrento, so we'll start there first. Exterior styling, we'll get to that in a minute, but let's start in the driver's seat. So here's where we're headed today, just so you want to know. Uh, driver's seat, going to show the driver's environment. There's a lot of similarities there, so that won't take too long to go from one to the other. Then we're going to go middle row seats. Uh, that matters because if you're looking at a minivan, you probably need extra seats. We're going to compare those two. We'll talk about some differences and pros and cons, and I'll sit in them so you can see a six-footer behind the driver in each of them. Then we're going to go third row seats, cargo space, and we're going to talk about all sorts of other stuff as well. So like I said, grab a beverage, grab a snack. We're going to be here for about a half an hour, probably a little bit more today. All right, jumping in here. Driver's seat first. First of all, keyless entry in both of these cars. You've got uh, different keys in each, so I'll show you the keys as I get to each car. If I forget, remind me to show you the key. But uh, that little button opens the door. You can saw the power driver's seat down there. Here is the key for the Sorento. Uh, this one does not have a powered tailgate, so this one does not have a button for the powered tailgate down here, which is a smart thing. Sometimes they used to put a button just to unlock the tailgate. They, the Carnival will have a powered tailgate, so it'll have an extra button for tailgate on here. And the Carnival has two powered doors, which you will be able to have side doors, which you'll have buttons on here for if I forget to show it. Hold button there is for the remote start. All of these cars that I'm showing you today, both these cars have remote start. So there we go. Put that key in my pocket. Powered seat with powered lumbar, and they are cloth seats. So again, this price range, oops, my lights turned out. So here's the problem, guys. The lights are gonna turn out because I've got a Telluride block in my motion sensor. It's a big vehicle. All right, uh, cloth seats in both these vehicles. Come on, camera, there we go. And uh, powered seat here. We'll talk about the Carnival as we get there. Jumping into the dash area, I'm gonna turn the vehicle to the on position. So because we're indoors, we don't fully run the vehicle. Uh, but we're gonna turn it to the on position for a second. I'm gonna turn the climate system off for a second. All right, so we've got a nice color display in the center there, and we've got left side tack, right side speedometer, pretty typical stuff. There's a lot to show you in this multi-information display panel. Ignore fuel efficiency. Anytime you see a vehicle at a dealership, it's been spending a lot of time idling. It's nowhere near that. We can show you the actual government numbers in this in a minute. But there's a lot of information in here. This is a nice color screen. It shows you a lot of things, and it is a very clear screen. It doesn't always show up on camera how clear it is, but it's a very easy to read screen. And you've got a number of things. There's your all-wheel drive bar graph. So this fills in with color bar graphs showing you where the power is at the time. Uh, this is the only vehicle we have today that is all-wheel drive. The minivan or the Carnival is front-wheel drive only. And you get some major cargo benefits from that. But uh, there we go. So you do have this uh, down the bottom, temperature gauge and fuel gauge there, little uh, dots across there. So that's pretty nice. Somebody says, love this car, very nice. Yeah, this is a really, really nice car. Over here, okay, so battery discharge warning. That's gonna show up on both the vehicles today. Because I don't have the vehicle running, but I have the electronics running, it's just gonna be like, hey, just so you know, because a lot of these cars when you're sitting here idling are fairly quiet, so sometimes they want you to know, hey, you're not running the vehicle right now, and of course, because we know that, we're not gonna worry about it. All right, so you've got AM, FM, stereo system here. You've got uh, HD radio, I'm 95% sure, yes. HD radio as well in there. And then you also have the big thing wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Now, when you have wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay, you should be looking for, and if the car manufacturer does it correctly, let's just turn the lights on here, uh, you should be looking for a little wireless charge pad, which this one does have. You can see that little 
Let me zoom in here a little bit dark in this one area of this car. That little symbol right there means it's wireless charge pad. That little light will turn orange when I set my phone right here. Now the benefit with the charge pad in this car is it is ventilated. So it's faster charging than it used to be in previous model cars and it's ventilated. So when you're using Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, the phone gets a little bit warm, right? Because you're using it. It also gets warm when you charge it. So having a ventilated charge pad there, which you can't see at all, <laughs> I apologize, uh, is kind of nice and important. You can throw it in there. You can also hide that with the cover right there. You've also got rump roasters in this car. I do not need them today, so I'm gonna turn them down and I am gonna open up the window in here because it's still warm. This car was sitting outside a minute ago, so I'm gonna get some airflow through here. Automatic transmission. Now, these are both eight-speed automatic transmissions in these vehicles. However, the, the Sorento has a slight different feel to it if you're sort of really attuned to driving. It has what's called a, a dual-clutch transmission. It's used by a lot of big manufacturers. Things like Porsche uses that kind of thing. So it is great for efficiency. It's great for performance. Uh, and that's really why they use it. Mo mostly about efficiency in this car. Um, but it's just they can use it on a four-cylinder turbo. It's got 311 foot-pounds of torque. So significantly more torque in this car than in the minivan. Uh, but they do also have uh, more horsepower in the minivan. Do the visors extend back? Uh, yeah, they do. So switch them like this, switch them like that, pull them out like that. So there you go. Uh, all right, so we'll keep looking here. And uh, so again, torque is good in this car, but transmission is an eight-speed dual clutch, not an eight-speed traditional transmission. Now, because we have all-wheel drive here, we've got four drive modes, comfort, eco, sport, and smart. And then you tap this down, and you've got terrain modes, snow, which is helpful, mud, and sand. Now, keep in mind, you never have to put it in that snow mode. What that does is it optimizes things for snow, but you are always all-wheel drive in any drive mode, and um, that drive system will move around. What the different drive modes do is they can change the vehicle stability control, the traction control, the um, uh, things like the all-wheel drive system, things like the throttle response. They can optimize all of those things for various terrains. So like I said, snow, mud, and sand, you can optimize it for those. Uh, however, you can also optimize it just for regular driving. So all the drive modes are opt optimized for pavement. Uh, if you hit snow and you're not in snow mode, don't worry. You've got the good control, but it will change that as well. Okay, so we've got that, and then we're going to show you the steering wheel here as well. As we go to the steering wheel, you do have paddle shifters here. Again, sort of hints at that performance. And I will say, driving the uh, Sorento, Sorento and Carnival, one of them's a little sportier. Which one do you think it is? It's the Sorento. The Sorento has a real punch to it with that 311 foot-pounds of torque. Um, it is sporty to drive. It is fun to drive. Um, the minivan is more of a cruiser. This is a little more peppy and jumpy if you want it to be. It can certainly be uh, relaxed as well with the drive modes. All right, so you've got the paddle shifters. That's what we talked about there. Change eight, um, eight gears there. Somebody says, wow, finally got to a live video. Hey, welcome to the club. All right, so we've got cruise control right on this side here. That multi-information display, that's that color display screen in the center. All of that can be adjusted just by your thumbs right here. And then this is your lane follow assist. Same feature in both cars. We can talk about what that is if you want to know a little bit later. Uh, it basically steers itself, keeps the car centered by itself. So the car is capable of steering itself, keeping it centered in the lane, and you have the ability to turn that on and off, toggle it on and off with your thumb right there. Overall, over here, uh, we have the audio controls and Bluetooth controls, automatic headlights, which we'll show you them later. They are LED headlights on both of these cars. You can start to see them here. The only issue I have with filming with this camera on this wall is in real life, that is a very white light. In the camera, it shows a lot more yellow than it is there. So over here, um, power windows, power locks, power mirrors, that kind of thing. You got a little different styling here. Uh, these little vents, they only go back and forth. They don't go up and down on the bottom, but they kind of aim nicely at your legs while these can be aimed up higher. I really noticed it down in this area. My knees and that area gets nice and, you know, gets good temperature control from that across my legs. And of course this can go towards my body. So nice venting there, automatic climate control, dual zone automatic climate control with the rear AC. So that's a little different than, let me just turn this down. The uh, rear AC is a little different than a rear climate control. So it's not quite a tri-zone climate control. It just has a sort of boosting uh, rear air conditioner in there. Um, there is a control back there. We'll show you as we get there. But you have that there. So that's kind of the quick overview. I know it's not that quick. We're 15 minutes in the video. Uh, blind spot detection on this car. So really good features on this car. Now let's jump over to the Carnival. This will be quicker because a lot of it is a repeat of what you saw. Again, keyless entry. We're going to show you the key right now just to show you the difference between the two. And um, 
there's the side there. So you can see the remote start is still there, but now you've got the door keys and you've got an extra button for the trunk in the middle um, that opens that powered tailgate. So I'm gonna put that in my pocket as well. Powered seats, cloth seats, exact same adjustments. Lumbar support, the exact same. There is definitely some width difference here. It feels wider, it feels a little larger. However, it is no harder to drive in my opinion. This car turns, or this minivan, turns very sharply and makes it very easy to park, which is a bit of a surprise for the length of the vehicle. If you've seen this before somewhere, like, you know, in earlier in our video, it's basically the exact same thing. You've got all the same types of features in here, different colors, that kind of thing. Again, ignore fuel efficiency numbers on a video like this. They don't really reflect the reality. Um, but you've got the same type of information here. Obviously, the no four-wheel drive bar graph because there is no bar graph uh, because there's no four-wheel drive. Over here, again, same features again. You've got the exact same situation where you've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, AM, FM stereo, HD radio. So a nice mix here. Both of these vehicles have very good sounding bass audio systems. You don't have to move to the top trim level to have great sound, although that is better sound than here. Uh, scrolling down through here, let's go back to wireless phone charging pad. You can see the venting in this one because it's a little bit better lit just where I'm parked. If I can get it to focus, there we go. Uh, so same exact benefits there. Three USBs here. You'll see that wireless charge pad there as well. Automatic climate control that works the exact same way. You've got the three levels of auto. Uh, to turn that down, we can talk about that if you have questions. There is a rear climate setting. And when I tap that rear climate setting, what it does is it moves the climate system uh, information up here, which I can turn the rear climate on auto as well. We'll turn it back to um, full auto. So there we go. Now we've got tri-zone climate control. So what we'll do is this is a true tri-zone. 19 here, 20 in the back, 22 out front. Or you can sync them all together by hitting the sync button and put it like that. All that auto button does is essentially limit the maximum, um, the fan speed, and that can keep it a little quieter in here. It can just do a whole bunch of things for you. One thing I will point out in this car, again, this car costs less money, this right here is a little windshield grid. I'm gonna to try to show you filming with this camera. It's not the best, but if I can focus on my fingers, see on the right side of your screen, those little squiggly lines? Those squiggly lines are a tungsten element in the windshield. They're almost invisible. The entire windshield pretty much has that. What that means is you never have to scrape this windshield. If you are a Canadian or you live in cold climate, you say, yeah, I want all wheel drive because of the snow. You don't need all wheel drive in the snow. What you need is to never have to scrape a windshield. My Kia Soul EV, my electric car, has this windshield. Didn't really think much of it until the winter came. Hokey smokes, that is a game changer as far as easeability, like ease of use. Um, you really almost don't see it. I mean, you have to really look to see it, but you can see right through. And it is excellent for not having to scrape windshield. And let's face it, it's a big windshield on the minivan here. All right, coming down here, eight-speed transmission, not the dual clutch transmission, the regular eight-speed automatic transmission. We've got a V6 and a traditional transmission. It is automatic. You can shift your own gears. You can tow 3,500 pounds with both these vehicles. We have seat heaters here. We have steering wheel heater there. I do not need these on, rump roasters. And we also have parking beepers. And the backup camera is basically identical in both cars. The light is out in our room again because I didn't walk by the sensor in time. Really clear, identical backup cameras in both of them. So, a lot going on here. Uh, same type of steering wheel controls here. Cruise control over here. Same type of lane and follow assist over there. Uh, a little bit extra button. This button here, you can set a little extra setting. We can talk about that in future automatic headlights and they are LED headlights again. And the same thing here. They look way whiter in person than they do on the camera. We'll take a look at that in a second. So that's front seat. We got to go rear seat. We got to go cargo space. We're going to take your questions right now. I'm going to beg you for some likes. I would really like it if you could hit the like button. Uh, I work hard on these things. It takes me a while to get this uh, information in my head. So all I ask of you is one little... That's all I need. And that would really help me out. Now I'm gonna go take your questions and then we're gonna go see the space that this vehicle has compared to the other one to help you make the decisions on those kind of things. So features wise, let me just turn the vehicle off here. Features wise, where am I? There we go. Features wise, you're very similar in both these cars. There are a few little differences. We can dig into some of them a little bit better uh, at this trim line. I'm just gonna walk backwards here until I turn the light on by motion sensor and we'll keep going there. All right, made it to 20 likes. Uh, I'm gonna go real conservative and see if we can get to 30 likes today. Usually when I say 20 likes at the 20 minute mark, we can get to 40, but we're gonna go real conservative, see if we can get to 30. How much does the base Sorento cost? Base Sorento is, I'll tell you right now, uh, LX plus, oh, sorry, just the LX. LX plus is 33,995. 
The base carnival while we're there is $34,795. So similar price points on the base models. Uh, base model is interesting though, like the carnival for instance has no heated seats. Uh, so you're gonna have to look at that. Most people are gonna jump to the LX Plus, I think, um, because it's really good mix of uh, features. But again, this one's a turbo engine in the Sorento. You may wanna go with just the four cylinders, tow 2,800 pounds, that kind of thing. You guys say the Piano Black can be a mess to clean. Um, Yes and no. I'll be honest with you, I don't find the Piano Black to be as bad in our vehicles as some other vehicles. Uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to have fingerprint issues with me the same way it does with uh, some other vehicles. So I don't know. It's not, I would worry, it's not something that I would worry about too much. It's not something I would overplay. And I wouldn't uh, let it be the deciding factor in this vehicle over another vehicle. Uh, some people like it, some people don't, and that's okay. But I don't think it's something that should uh, deter you from test driving and considering it for yourself. All right, going through the questions here. Does both vehicles have ambient lighting? Actually, neither vehicle at this trim line has ambient lighting, and the Sorento in Canada doesn't have any ambient lighting at all. I believe it does in other markets. Will the newer Sorentos have the newer Kia logo? Yes, sort of, um, I'm told. So I'm told that every 2022 vehicle, now this is a 2021, every 2022 vehicle except for the Kia Sportage will have this logo. So again, the Carnival's already come out as a 2022 model. You've got the new logo, the... Um, Sorento here for 2021 will run with this logo. 2022 will have the new logo is my understanding. And uh, that's what we've been told. So uh, we'll see if that uh, holds true. I would believe it would be. Like I said, the Sportage will continue on with the current logo, that oval that we see that's pretty familiar to the rest of us. Uh, okay. The minivan is ugly. Can you hear me? Okay. There we go. I don't think the minivan's ugly at all. I think the, the general consensus here is 100%. People feel that for a minivan, this is an excellent looking minivan. Uh, the higher trim levels look even better, a little bit larger wheels, a little bit different details. Um, but yeah, I would flat out disagree with uh, ugly. I think it's a really practical design. So there we go. Keep rolling on from that. Old car logo will be collector car. There you go. There you go. Looks better than a Sienna or a Pacific 100%. Yeah, I do agree with that. They. Um, yeah, there's some weird designs in the minivan world. I don't think ours is one of them. I think ours is very good. All right, not a whole lot of questions yet, so we're gonna keep rolling through. Rear seat space, let's do this right now. Both driver's seats are roughly adjusted to me. I probably didn't have them perfectly adjusted, but I don't think it matters because both cars have fantastic rear seat space. Now, some of you may be surprised that if you get a turbo engine in the Sorento, there's no bench seat. There is just a uh, captain's chairs and that's a real appeal to some people some people really like that other people don't like that as much if you want the bench seat across here you're going to step down a level to the lx plus which is very similar to this vehicle on the inside uh, from the driver's environment but it does have a different engine it has the four-cylinder non-turbo so i'm going to jump in here for a second you'll see when i get in a couple things going on in these suvs and minivans uh, first of all, very comfortable. There's a ton of space there. There's a ton of space over here. Again, I'm sitting behind myself. Maybe the seat's not adjusted perfectly to me, but I don't think it matters in this car. We're not in a compact car. It's comfortable. And of course, you can recline a long ways and create all kinds of space. So I'm gonna put this up because right now I'm laying down, looking at the ceilings, kind of stretched out. Uh, but yeah, very comfortable seating here. I do wanna show you a couple little features here that you may not be able to see with this seat down, but the point is, we'll look at that in a second. There is a little pocket on the side of the seats. So this is the seat bottom here. And if I'm looking not through my camera, I can find it. There we go. Uh, there's a little pocket here where you can put your cell phone. That's important because they take care of your backseat passengers very well in this car. Another pocket here, another pocket there. And the reason I said that those pockets are important is because you have a USB port in the back of the seat for just about everybody here. Um, ignore some of the shipping plastic here. That's just what that is. We haven't fully stripped these vehicles down yet. Uh, you do have vents in the back here, 12 volt port, another USB port there, and another USB port in the back of the seat here. Somebody asked if there's a panoramic sunroof. Uh, not on this trim level. If you move up to the EX Plus trim line, you will get a panoramic sunroof here. In the Carnival, you have to go to the SX model where you will get a dual sunroof. Uh, the Carnival is the only vehicle we have with a second row sunroof, which is a massive panel. Uh, it actually opens up, so there we go. And uh, all right, we're gonna get rid of somebody here for a second because they are saying things that they don't need to say. And then we're gonna go back and take a look at the middle row of the Carnival. And there we go. Da -da -da -da. Okay, there we go. Got rid of somebody. Thanks, guys. Now we're going to jump in the Carnival, show you the same idea here. The Carnival can be, first of all, big difference here. Touch that button here. Whoops. Touch that button there. 
and the door opens. So that's if you've got kids, they don't have to yank on the handle, the door just opens. Now you can see difference here. You could have captain's chairs. This seat comes out very easily. It goes way back, comes way forward. We show you that in another video. Right now I have it down sort of as an armrest, a little holder, little table, uh, but you've got essentially captain's chairs as well if you wanted them to be, but you do have three rows across. And uh, same thing here, very easy to get out. I just wanna show you right here, there's a handle right here on the door. I'm going to use that to get in. You don't need it, but it's nice to have it there. You can hold on to that. You can easily climb in. It is a tiny bit lower to the seat here. Um, but again, very comfortable. Headroom, immense. Legroom, even more immense. And again, I didn't adjust the seat perfectly for me, but the point is, you fit. Um, you know, you can fit behind yourself pretty much no matter how tall you are here. I have not put Shaquille O'Neal in here. If he's willing to come down and try it out, we could try with him. Maybe it'll be a little snug for him. Everybody else, they're going to fit just fine. Uh, back here, again, nice features. You've got that rear air conditioning, so you have the vents on the roof there, which is pretty nice. Uh, you've got the lights here. They have shipping plastic on it, so they don't look as nice. Uh, actually, they'll turn it off. Hold on. There we go. So you got that, and um, you also have the same idea here. You, whoops, oh, where are we going now? There we go. Same idea here. You've got the uh, USB port there, the same type of dual pocket system here, where you've got that pocket and that pocket on the driver and passenger side seat. Uh, you have the extra 12 volt port here, but no extra USB port, which I don't think you need. You have one over here as well. And um, of course the seats in this vehicle move way forward and way back. Now, compromise time. Three row SUV or minivan? From here forward, you kind of have the same stuff, right? Your passengers in the middle row are gonna be comfortable. Front row people, similar features. Where it makes a difference is right back there, and that's where we're gonna go take a look right now as we finish up this video. Because this is where I think the debate comes in. Should I buy the minivan, or should I buy something like the Sorento? So first of all, powered doors. You can see they pop up like that. That's kind of nice in the minivan. You get that at this price point. You don't have it at this price point, which is just a hair more in the Sorento. Now, the other thing you get is immense amounts of space here. That seat was where I was just sitting with tons of legroom behind the driver. Um, you know, I don't know if it's six feet of space between there and here, but it's pretty close to an adult being able to lay down without moving that seat forward. If you move it forward, I could certainly lay down. Here is the other difference here a really deep buried area right there. So let's just throw this seat up for a second. Very easy to do. And uh, we'll just leave it up, just tilted down like that for now. Because what I want to show you is the cargo space here. And the way we're going to do that is with my teddy bear. I'm going to open up the Sorento as I'm walking by. So real quick Sorento, same type of arrangement here, folded down seat, a much shorter but still usable space. And again, less space behind that rear seat that's up right now. So let's throw my teddy bear, who is my trunk measurement tool. Some people ask why I use a teddy bear. Well, if I just fill this camera with a back seat, it's very difficult to see the size. However, when I throw my teddy bear in here, he likes it back here. In the minivan, this is a massive teddy bear. We've used this in all sorts of our videos. Any one of our videos, if you're comparing trunk space, I use the same teddy bear in every video. You can see in here, I mean, he's like buried down in there tons of space, and you still haven't even begun to use really th anything above the bumper level. You could stack stuff in here. If you had a week's vacation with eight passengers in this vehicle, you could stack up eight people's worth of clothing, pillows, sleeping bags, everything you need. You still got the roof rack to add more, but a lot of it can go in the vehicle. And that's the real difference in cargo space between something like this, which is a minivan, and something like this, which is a mid-size SUV. Putting him behind the seat over here, I think you're gonna see one of the differences. You cannot stack as much up high here. So really, if you have a ton of storage, a ton of luggage, you're going to be moving these seats down and that's the big benefit. Your teddy bear still fits there a little bit. You can put a lot of luggage there, uh, but minivans are incredibly practical for space. So if you need to take a lot of luggage, you're going to be obviously looking at the carnival and um, I don't think you're gonna be sacrificing. Again, the Carnival that we're looking at today costs less than this Sorento that we're looking at. If you want off-road ability, this uh, X-Line has an extra uh, almost two inches of ground clearance uh, over the standard, you know, the SX model or the uh, EX, EX Plus. So you've got a little bit more ground clearance. You've got these dark wheels, uh, they're gray wheels, they're not black, they're gray, dark, dark gray. 
uh, but you have a little extra ground clearance. So if you want all-wheel drive, you want the multiple drive modes, terrain modes, you want to be able to go over that snowbank at the end of your driveway, because let's face it, nobody's going that far off-road in these things, uh, then this one's going to have a little bit more space. However, or sorry, this one's going to have a little more capability that way. However, for space, minivan is the way to go. Now, let's jump in the back seat here, third row. It's 30 minutes in already. We're almost wrapping this up, guys. So, again, power door on this side here. And I am going to, uh, I believe, oh, I haven't done this in a while. Yep, there we go. Pull the one handle right there. So now I've got access to get into the back. I'm six feet tall. You tell me if this looks difficult to do, to get in. I duck down, I jump in, I sit over here, and I'm comfortable, uh, quite comfortable. Headroom, oops, let me flip back again here. Headroom, I usually have the camera in the other hand. Headroom uh, doesn't look like a lot, but there is uh, plenty of headroom, oh boy. I'm definitely used to filming with the other hand. A lot of headroom there, uh, pretty good. And let's put the seat back here. Let me just bear with me. Okay, we're gonna have some terrible camera work for a second. Put this back. Okay, this seat now is back as far as it goes. The seat, the middle row seat that's in front of me. Check it out. As far as it goes back, oh boy. Not a great cameraman with my wrong hand. My knees are still clear and I'm actually quite comfortable back here. Uh, keep in mind, the middle row seat can move a long ways forward, several inches forward, still have enough space. Uh, so you can easily fit a six footer behind a six footer behind a six footer in the minivan, no problem. Let's compare the Sorento now. Now back here, I should say USB ports in the wall. Let me just uh, flip around to the other side here. USB ports for the rear seat passengers, ignore the shipping plastic again. USB ports, uh, cup holders, armrests, uh, pretty good space back here for everything you need. And again, three people can sit in the back, three people in the middle and three people in the, um, or two people in the front. All right, now I'm gonna pull this. I should point that out actually, trying to show everything here. There is a little lever back here, or a strap back here to pull, to put that seat forward. Um, that is uh, helpful for someone in the third row like myself. Now getting out, let's just show you that. Easy climb, no big deal. For a six footer like myself, I can handle that. Sorrento, a little bit different, still works fine. I call these not temporary back seats, but I don't call them, let's all go to the cottage back seats. Um, so one thing that's nice about here, we'll put the, hold on, I need a hand free for a second, bear with me. All right, so you saw, maybe you didn't see that. When you fold the seats down, the bottom lowers, it drops and the top comes down. So it does give you a little extra cargo space. This is how you get in the back seat, it works really well. Press that button and it bounces forward till where the rear seat hits. Getting in here, there's less space in here, but again, six feet tall, how well do I do it? Pretty easily. Jumping in, no problem. How much space do I have? Headroom, similar, maybe a hair less, but it's okay. The only real difference for me in the back is this. Let me just show you with my right hand this time. I'll show you my legs. My legs are raised up off the seat. They're not level on the seat. And as I pull this seat back, all the way back, I still fit in here. So I still fit, but you can see my legs aren't level, they're up. So that is the real difference in the Sorento. Could I ride back here for an hour? Could I go downtown? Could I, you know, drive to, you know, long, fairly long distance? Sure, but after an hour, I'm probably saying, okay, we should have bought the minivan. That's your size comparison between these two vehicles. Do I fit back here? You bet I do. Take a look over here. Uh, flip the camera around here. You've got vents back here and a USB port. So all your rear seat passengers also have a USB port. And I'm gonna try to just jump out of the way here and show you what's in the back on the right side here. USB port in the vent, plus the fan control and the on off. So you can turn that rear AC on or off from the back here. Excuse the shipping plastic on it. That's why it doesn't look real high end right now. You could drop the front row seats. When the trunk is open, you have a USB, or sorry, a 12 volt port as well back here. Again, when these seats are down, this is your trunk area. And again, armrest, ignore this, all of that shipping plastic and that can go. So pretty good space back here, pretty good stuff. Now, the only issue is how do I get out of here? Oops. That's not what I wanted. How do I get out of here? Instead of having a strap, the same button as before. So see that button right there? We're gonna press it. As we do that, you see it jumps forward there and will let me get out of here as I do that. Little tougher, but still pretty doable. So what I would call it is, this car is pretty easy to uh, get in and out of. The rear seat is great for the, um, 
Rear seat is great for up to about an hour trip as far as full comfort. Beyond that, for an eight hour trip, I'm gonna wanna be in the carnival. And I think that's a fair trade off. So there's the overall size review. We were going for 30 likes. There's 48 people on right now, 57 people on right now. And uh, I was gonna go for about 30 likes, maybe 40 likes. We're just gonna answer your questions, but do me a favor guys. The only thing I ask of you, all of this is free for you. Just hit that like button for me. That really helps me out. We're trying to get to, let's see if we can get to 40 right now. All right, I'm gonna answer your questions. Looking for 12 more likes. What do we got for questions? I like the Sorrento better than the Carnival. Cool. Carnival is like a school bus. That's a good thing though. How is the warranty for either vehicle? So class leading warranty for everything, depending on where you are. We live in Canada here and uh, five year, 100,000 kilometer warranty. Uh, for full details on our warranty, just visit the website, talk to our sales team. But yeah, class leading warranty here in Canada, excellent warranty. And that's a powertrain as well. A lot of people will give you five years, 100,000 kilometers, but not on the powertrain. So that's not the case here. Does Kia offer a mat to cover when the rear seats are folded? Yes, you can get mats to cover the rear seat. There's accessories for both these cars. So that's a good question. And uh, could you show the button that pushes the front passenger seat forward in the carnival? Yeah, there's no button that pushes the front passenger seat forward. Um, it's, a, it's a lever, so good question. It's a little different in this one, but it is a lever that pulls it forward. So that's what this button, this lever there is what I pulled. Uh, there we go. So the seat's back in that position. And if I just pull the lever like this with two fingers, it moves very simply there. So it's not hard to do. No, no button, but it does have a lever there. So uh, pretty simple, good question. Just going back to ask this, back to the questions again. You guys are real stingy with the likes today. So I'm just uh, doing my best here for you. Okay. Okay, so let's flip back over here. Let you look at the cars instead of me. I'm uh, a new Kia salesperson. Your videos really help me in gaining product knowledge. Hey, Jonathan M. Jonathan M's a new Kia salesperson. Going to be really rough on you, Jonathan. They should shop with us, right? I mean, if we're doing the part. No, I'm just kidding. Jonathan, good luck to you, buddy. All right. Okay. Can the second row of seats turn and face the third row? So that's a carnival question. A lot of people in the carnival have watched international videos where the second row seats can be flipped backwards to face the rear seats. In Canada, that can't happen. They tell us it's for legal reasons. Uh, I'm not sure why because something like the Tesla Model S used to have rear seats facing rearward. So that's a fairly modern car with rear facing seats. So uh, there we got that. We've got a couple people in here that are going to be gone now because they're not contributing to the conversation. So um, we'll get rid of that. And uh, one more. Bear with me, guys. There are just uh, a couple people that are not helping. Okay. Okay, so any other questions? I'm just going to dig through here. If there's something I missed, some of my regulars can point that out for me. Uh, I tried to get to as many as I could, and we're one short of the 30 likes, so I guess we're not going to hit that today. Panorama group we talked about. Da, 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 da. I think we hit all the questions, or all the main ones anyways. Okay, so there we go, guys. Uh, appreciate you watching this this week. Uh, just so you know, again, I don't know if you guys all caught this earlier. Sorrento, I just confirmed today that the Sorrento is going to be available in a plug-in hybrid. That will hit production first, and then a hybrid. So both of those are going to hit production very soon. That will be coming as a 2022 model year. I don't know when the will be released as far as an actual product. I don't have any information on it yet, but we will see the Sorrento in a plug-in hybrid, hits production first, and then a hybrid soon after that. Uh, and when I say soon after, we're talking like, I think within the same month or so, if I remember correctly. Uh, so that's big news with the Sorrento. Carnival just came out. It's going to be fantastic. It's doing really well for us, uh, going like crazy. So there we go. All right, somebody said congrats on the K5. Somebody bought a K5. Oh, I bought a K5 GT line in February. I love it. Yes, K5 is an amazing car. I wish we could get more. Kia Canada didn't plan for as many cars as we can sell. Uh, if we could get more K K5s, we would stock them. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that again next week sometime. All right, so somebody says, yes, I'm looking for a hybrid. Yeah, so keep an eye out for the 2022s uh, and subscribe to our channel. If you want to know more about hybrids of this, we will cover that more than anybody. We cover a lot of hybrid EV type stuff here. And there we go. What colors does the Sorrento come in? Best thing to do is check the Kia website, kia.ca. That'll show you the colors better than I can describe them. So just go there. Uh, number of colors in both these cars. And I think we're going to leave it there, guys. We've gone a little over time. I try to stick around a half an hour. So I want to thank everyone for joining us this week. It's been a fun week here, a big week here. And uh, we've got a lot more coming up next week. It's really exciting time for us. So uh, keep watching. Have fun. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone.